Now you know I like to show off some of my best stuff in these videos, but in this one, I'm going to show you Simon's favorite factoring trick, which I learned from Simon himself. Is that you don't, you don't know Simon? Oh, you're missing out. Simon's wicked smart, plays a mean cello, just got his PhD from Stanford, which means he probably knows more math than I do. Shh. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're asking me, why don't we have Simon doing this video? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because Simon's a thousand miles away. That's what I call job security, keeping Simon a thousand miles away. Now, I'm going to teach you his favorite factoring trick with this problem right here. We're trying to find all pairs of positive integers that satisfy this equation. And this bit about trying to only find integers that satisfy this equation, very important, even has a special name. We call equations like this Diophantine equations. It's just a big fancy word that says we're only looking for integer solutions. Now let's see here, what are we going to use to solve this? Of course, we're going to use Simon's favorite factoring trick. We're going to try to factor. Now the bit about integers is a clue that we're going to try to factor. We'll see a little bit later why. But of course, we're doing a video on Simon's favorite factoring trick. We're not going to break out Simon's favorite guessing and checking trick. Because guessing and checking on this is going to be a real pain. Now, where can we factor? Well, I can't factor the whole left side, but I can factor an m out of those first two terms. I have m times n plus 3 minus 8n equals 59. And now it looks like we're stuck. Can't factor anything else right here. So now I'm going to break out one of my favorite strategies, which is wishful thinking. Now, I would like to be able to factor more over here. And if this n were to magically turn into an n plus 3, then I could factor out an n plus 3 from the two terms. So I wish, I wish really hard to turn that into an n plus 3, and I see how to make my wishes come true. I can get an n plus 3 out there if just I have a minus 8 times 3 to factor the minus 8 out of. Now if I subtract 8 times 3 on the left side, can't play favorites, got to subtract it on the right side as well. And now over here, I can factor out that minus 8 and check out what we have. We factor out the minus 8, and we've made our wishes come true. We've got that minus 8 times n plus 3. Over here, 39 minus 59 minus 24 is 35. And now we can factor again. And this, this step right here where we tacked on that little minus 8 times 3, that's Simon's favorite factoring trick. Throwing a little, a little extra term there on both sides to let us factor the left-hand side. Simon's wicked smart. So now we have this times this equals 35. Now here's where the bit about integers, this Diophantine bit, is so important. Because m and n are integers, m minus 8 and n plus 3 are integers. Now there are only so many pairs of integers that multiply together to give us 35. And here we're restricting even more. We want positive integers. So if m and n are positive, well, we know at least n plus 3 has to be positive. So we need m minus 8 to be positive as well to get a positive 35. So we need both of these to be positive. So now we just have to think about the ways in which we can write 35 as a product of two positive integers. Well, there aren't a whole lot of those. There's 1 times 35. There's 5 times 7, 7 times 5, and 35 times 1. Now we'll look at each one of these possibilities and we'll figure out what values of m and n go with each. So for the first one here, 1 and 35, well, if m minus 8 is 1, that means m is 9. If m plus 3 is 35, that tells us n is 32. Come down here, m minus 8 is 5, that gives us 13 for m. And then n plus 3 is 7, that gives us 4 for n. And then on to this one, m minus 8 is 7, that gives us 15 for m. n plus 3 is 5, that gives us just 2 for n. And finally, this last one, well, m minus 8 is 35, that gives us 43 for m, but n plus 3 equals 1, that makes n negative 2. Read the question, positive integers. So here are the three possibilities. And you would have had a hard time trying to find these just by guessing and checking. Checking. Checking's a good idea. Let's check these real quick. 
stick in 9, 32 in there, 9 times 32, well, we're going to have a minus 8 times 32 over there, and we put n equals 32 in there. So 9 times 32 minus 8 times 32, that's just going to leave 32, plus 3 times 9 is 27. 32 plus 27, 59. Let's try this one. 13 times 4 gives us 52, plus 3 times 13 is 39, 52 plus 39, it gives us 91, minus 8 times 4, 91, minus 32, 59. Put in these two, 15 and 2, 15 times 2 is 30, plus 3 times 15, that's another 45, that brings us up to 75, 75 minus 8 times 2, 75 minus 16, 59. All three work, these are correct. Now, when I'm breaking out Simon's favorite factoring trick, I don't always go through all these steps. I jump straight into my wishful thinking, and here's what it looks like. I look at this problem, and I see a product of variables, and then I see each of those variables in a linear term, and I think of Simon. Makes Simon happy, too. But I think of Simon when I see this, and I think, okay, I'm going to try to make that left-hand side factored. And when I get it factored, it's going to look something like this. I'm going to have two factors equal some number. And I'm going to have an m over here and an n over here. Because when I multiply these two out, these are both going to be binomials. I'm going to get m times n. That's going to give me that mn right there. Now I need a plus 3m right there. So I need to multiply this m times a plus 3. Plus 3. There we go. And I need a minus 8n to come out when we multiply this out, so I need a minus 8 right here. Minus 8 times n, that's going to give me the minus 8n. Of course, when I multiply all this stuff out, I'm also going to get this minus 8 times a plus 3. That's going to give me a minus 24. I don't have a minus 24 up there, so I'll put one in. And that's what gets me to think. Subtract 24 from both sides. Now, this is taking our steps a little bit out of order, but we get to the same equation we had before, and now we can solve the problem in the same way as before. So, moral of the story here is you see integers, you're trying to solve a Diophantine equation, think factoring. And when you see product of a variables, and in each of those variables in a linear term, you think assignment.